Well, hello. Welcome to the Well After Hours. I'm your host, Beverly Allen, and I'm so glad to be able to join you again around the well. But I'm also glad to be able to have my guests here today that are just such super great people that I've known for a number of years and that we have been able to come back together via this Zoom interview. And I'm so excited. I want to welcome Pastor author, professor, teacher, apologist, Tim Brewington, and his lovely wife, Lady Dr. Dana Rochelle Lucas Brewington. Welcome you all to the well. Thank you for being here today. Oh, it's Thank our you. pleasure to be here. We are excited. We've been looking for this opportunity to connect with you, and we are just so happy that our paths have crossed again. And we're excited. I'm thank excited. You, thank you, thank oh you. my goodness. You all have just been such a beautiful couple all the years that I have known you. And with your beautiful family, you know, your your son and your two daughters. I couldn't believe how, how grown they are now. I'm like, wow, I knew I was getting old, but now I know I'm getting old. <laughs> but they are just so and you two still look like little young lovebirds. I'm like, I'm like God is being good to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. We don't look like what we've been through, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And that's just like God. And yeah. and you know what? It, that is just so awesome having said that because one of the reasons why um, I invited Pastor Brewington to be here today with his lovely wife is because he has written an awesome book and it's titled For the Record that I want you to remember this this is for the record and it's going to be in the um, in this interview as well as their full bios on each of them because uh, I'm so proud of both of them and, and there's much to be proud for godly uh, proud of and um, this book is not just um, I don't want to say it's just uh, it's it's more of a journey I mean it says itself that it is a personal story of faith, healing, and hope. And if we ever needed hope, we needed hope. We need hope now. You know, mm -hmm. it really is. And the journey that you opened the door to allow us to come in and almost walk through it with you. I love the way that you opened up the book, you know, mm -hmm. with the scripture and about Paul and how you led into it. It flows so wonderful that when you finish one chapter, you're ready. Let me let me hurry up and get to the next chapter. It is just so wonderful and i'm telling you like you said you sure don't look like you've been what you've been through because no one would believe this journey you know that uh was started at 13 years old <laughs> and mm -hmm. it's just this testimony to the glory of god and to that he changes not what he is able to do you know and uh you explain it so well in the book, and I'm not going to, I'm going to let you share that with the viewers as you take us on this journey with you uh, of your healing and deliverance, you know. Oh. Yeah, thank you for that. Because I'm, I'm so excited. <laughs> but I said, let me let the author, <laughs> let me let the author talk about this book, because this is just, I tell you, for the record, it is on the record. Yeah. It's another well, testimony. <laughs> And I'll just say that the, the reason why I uh, titled the book For the Record is because I wanted to leave in human literature a testimony that God does involve himself in human affairs. So that for those who question the presence of God, mm -hmm. the ability of God, the knowledge of God, 
Is he the watchmaker that made the watch and then took his hands off of it? I want to say absolutely not. For the record, he is still (laughs) actively involved in human affairs. And when man has done all that he He, can do, is just getting started. And so I wanted to leave a record. I wanted to leave a record for my children so that they can hear in my own words what God has done for me. I wanted to make sure that when my voice goes silent, that when my physical presence is no longer here, there is still a testimony written on record to give somebody hope and healing and expectation to look for God to intervene in human affairs. And I I wanted tangible evidence that says when man has given up, when man has done everything that he can do, the only explanation why I am having this conversation with you today is because God stepped in when man was ready to step out. All right right now. You go, you yeah. better preach. He got, Dana, he's gonna make us take an offering for him before this. <laughs> Cash app dollar sign to <laughs> <Roy. laughs> <Come on. laughs> and, and so All right. I, I wanted to take people on this journey. I wanted them to feel the emotions that I felt. I want them to to hear my thought processes and that experience. You know, I didn't just wake up sick and then wake up healed the next day. It was a nine to 10 month journey, uh, not knowing what the end was going to be. But I knew God had made me a promise and I had to trust him. And 34 years later, I'm still here. And Mm. matter of fact, my anniversary for my bone marrow transplant is October the 15th which was yesterday. So the fact that we're having this uh, uh, interview today, God's Mm -hmm. timing is impeccable. And Mm he's saying to the person who is watching right now, he's still healing. It's 34 Mm -hmm. years later, Mm -hmm. he's still healing. He's still moving. Even in this pandemic, he still has the last say. And we have a record. And and if you can't get to the Bible, we got another another record. (laughs) And, 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 And and what I love about this record is that, you know, where we leave out on the New Testament, here we are in the 21st century, and we can see, you know, living proof. And that's that's what is wonderful about it, that, you know, we read and we believe by faith, but we actually, he, God shows us things even now, you know, yeah. of what he is able to do, if it's in his will and purpose. And that's why we also know, I know we'll hear it as you go on, the purpose of God for even the times that we are living in now. And I want to tell the viewers that um, uh, Pastor Brewington is also the pastor of Fellowship Church in uh, Woodbury, Minnesota. And he has been a pastor, had pastoral experience for over 20 years. And um, he's done a lot of amazing things and is doing a lot of amazing things that you will hear as, as, as we go forward, maybe not in this interview, but I'm putting up already <laughs> a little note that we will be doing another one or part two. But I thank the Lord for all that I know that he has done in their lives and his lovely wife's life and them being together are just such a wonderful couple. I tell you, always had each other's back, always been what they say to ride and die. <laughs> you know, a couple, and that's just so awesome. And their children, their beautiful children that they have. And so now, um, and also, Dr. Dana, I want you to tell the viewers just a little bit about yourself, I don't, because I don't want you to get lost in this interview, because you, <laughs> he got, he has an amazing partner. He got a good backup. <laughs> oh, you, you are fine. You are fine. Thank you so much. So, um, Pastor Tim and I met in college at Xavier University in New Orleans almost 25 years ago. It would be in December. Um, Two more months. That's first week. Yes. Although we have more history before that but 25 years ago, married. And so um, I've always wanted to be a doctor. And so as I went through school, that's how I got to meet you and Bishop Allen um, in New Jersey, New York. Uh, We then relocated back to Atlanta, Georgia, which is my home place. 
And after that, I received a job uh, position in Minnesota. And so we have been in Minnesota since 2007 and was supposed to be a one year contract. And I'm working on the 14th year <laughs> here as we speak. So um, to be in the place where obviously I did not know Tim at the time when he was coming to University of Minnesota at the age of 12 and 13 for this miraculous bone marrow transplant, but to basically come full circle, he left when he was 13 and to come back now um, in the 30s with a full family, with a wife, with all that he had behind it, it was just full circle. And we returned back to the same church um, that really ministered unto him uh, while he was there. So I'm just glad to just be a, a part of the circle and to continue on and to pick up from where God did what he did for the record. Wow. All right. Oh my goodness. Ooh. What they say is this is getting gooder and gooder and gooder. <laughs> oh, well, 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 Pastor Tim, you, I'm, I'm letting you share um, with the viewers how this all started because I mean, just reading it myself, you know, uh, about how it just kind of, you know, cropped up all of a sudden. How? Yeah. You know, it's, it's interesting. I, I was diagnosed with a severe form of aplastic anemia and aplastic anemia is a condition where your bone marrow stops reproducing uh, blood cells. So, you know, your blood cells are replaced every 72 hours or so. Uh, is that right, Dr. 120 days. 120 days, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and so when my blood cells died, new, <laughs> new cells were being reproduced. Right. So essentially, I was bleeding to death mm -hmm. and not knowing it. Mm -hmm. And it could have been going on for years. I would have headaches all the time. I would have bloody noses. If ever I got cut or scraped, when that blood left my system, it was not being replaced because my bone marrow had shut completely down. Mm. And it was not until it was a Sunday morning mm -hmm. and I was singing in the Youth for Christ Choir at Greater Morning Star in Washington, D.C. And we were singing a song. I don't have no doubt the Lord will fight my battles. My God. I don't have no doubt the Lord will bring me out. Mm. Sing that song like my life depended on it. Ooh. Within hours after singing that song, I was in the hospital and the doctors were saying, we don't know what's making him sick mm. and we don't know how to make him well. Mm. Call on whoever you want to see him because he will be dead in the morning. Mm. So that's when I, I was so critical that they would not transfer me to Children's Hospital because they said I would not survive the helicopter ride. Okay. Hmm. So they just left me there, told people to, to come and see me. Uh, but I belonged to a church that believed in oh, prayer. Yes. My pastor went in that church, prayed all night long. Like, my like God. wrestled with that age. Woo! I said, I won't let go until you bless him. Bless my and, and so, oh my God. Wow. The morning, the doctor, let me calm myself down. That's all right. <laughs> Act it up. The, nope, not going to do it. Um, Woo! <laughs> one of the doctors came and told my father, I came here this morning to sign your son's death certificate. Mm. Instead, I'm signing his transfer to the next hospital. Oh, don't don't sign my death certificate. You don't have authority <laughs> Come on. to sign my death certificate. Come on. <laughs> that ain't up to my you. God. That ain't up to you. So you practice medicine. The chief <laughs> physician ain't practicing. <laughs> we, we found out who the real Jehovah Rephi is, right? <laughs> but one, ain't but one. Mm -hmm. So um, it was probably four days later after a battery of tests that uh, I was diagnosed with severe aplastic anemia. And although uh, they knew what I had, the good news, there was no good news after that. Because the next thing is, well, if he doesn't have a bone marrow transplant, then he'll be dead in three months. That's number one. Number two, bone marrow transplant was still considered 
uh, experimental procedure at the time. So even if you, we can have the bone marrow transplant, mm -hmm. your insurance company is probably not going to pay for it. Mm -hmm. So even, but even if you get an insurance company that will pay for it, your next hurdle is find a, a donor, a match for you. You are an African-American. The likelihood that you find a match is slim to none. That's why I want everybody to go to bone marrow, uh, donation com. I think it is, or I'll get the right website, but sign up to be a donor because you can save somebody's life. And so everything was stacked up against me. And then um, they test people in my family and nobody uh, was a match for me until my sister, my oldest sister had a, had a dream and she woke up the next day. She told my parents, you need to have me tested to see if I match. Mm. And can I tell you, she was a perfect match. Yes. And yes, and isn't that something? Now tell the viewers why she shouldn't have been. What, what did the medical society say? <laughs> so the, the likelihood that she would be a perfect match, even amongst siblings, is very unlikely that she would be a match. And she wasn't just a partial match because things were so desperate, they wouldn't get a partial match. Mm. But she wasn't a partial match. She was a perfect match, which means- As if you were twins, they said. <laughs> Yes, because there's only one. <laughs> That's all right. Mm -hmm. but which means that when God put her together, mm. he had me in mind. <laughs> Jesus. So <laughs> talk about declaring the end from the beginning. Come on. Mm. I already know. Mm. That's why she had to be born first. first. She had to be the oldest. Mm. Mm -hmm. So that she could be ready. So that so that immune system, that bone marrow could really get fully functional. Mm. And uh it, it's just one miracle after another. Uh, not only did the insurance company pay for it, but my father who went out there with me. Uh, his job paid him as if he was coming to work every day mm -hmm. for the four and a half months he was out there with mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. I don't owe anybody anything. Come on, my million mm -hmm. dollars. Mm. Um, and, but even all of that, let me say, perfect match, mm. money, you still need a miracle. Yes. Because there were seven other kids in that ward mm -hmm. with me and every one of them died except me Jeez. and they had money and they had a match yes and they but they um, come on no come on come on Ooh, my it's lord miracle. jesus see money and matches don't no. make miracles come on <laughs> so he made sure he took away everything to show everybody what you think you need is not what you need what you need is me come on me. It, 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 it's me. Without me, you can do nothing. Oh my Lord. It's amazing. I, I won't pretend that it was easy. Yeah. Right? I mean, there were days I was like, Lord, I appreciate the miracle, but right now I'm in misery. Yeah. You can come get me. There were days where I said, God, today would be a good day to get me out of here. There were times where I was in so much pain. I said, God, it's not fair. It's not right. What did I do to cause you to allow this to happen to me? I'm not going to. I begged to be absent from this life. That is, a, isn't that something? And you know, you hear people say, oh, I want God to really use me. Do you really? You, do you know what he might do to use, you know what I mean, to use you? And I'm saying like maybe the wonderful things that God is doing now and what he has for your future. People don't look at the past. They don't know the story of what you had to go through to kind of get the favor of God on you, to get the anointing of God on you. That's not something that's just given away lightly. Most of the people I know, that are truly anointed and have, or God is really, they've been through something. There is a story. I don't care what it looks like now. They may look successful and prosperous, but there's a story behind the story. Yes. And can I just add this? Please. There's still a price to pay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
get over it. You go through the rough part. You're anointed. You got favor. And now it's smooth sailing. No, I'm still paid Mm -hmm. for what God is doing in my life. Mm -hmm. When there, when you are are used by God to break down barriers, Mm -hmm. to tie up and bind the hand of the adversary, Mm -hmm. to change people's minds, to redirect their lives, that comes with a great personal cost. And everybody connected to you pays that cost. Ask, ask my wife, ask yeah. my children. Come on. Mm-hmm. And, and, and so, listen, don't get caught up in, in the fluff. In the, yeah. Sunday morning is 10% of it. Right. The other 90% mm-hmm. is expensive. Right. It costs you a lot. It costs you sleep. It costs mm-hmm. you friends, mm-hmm. money reputation, going out, having a good to vacations, mm-hmm. you name it, it's going to cost you. Mm-hmm. But what you get in return, That's right? money can't buy it. Can't buy it. That piece. Come on. Money. That's what I'm talking about. That's why he tells us to count up the cost. That's right. You know, but he said also, look at the reward. Right. The reward. You know, yeah. the rewards outweigh the cost. <laughs> And Eddie says you get this reward in this, this life. In this life, yes. Yeah. In this life. In this life. Come on. Come on. I'm not Double paying bonus. to you. You got to pay me something now. What do what I get? That. Come on, somebody. Those are great benefits and odds, I tell you. I'm, I'm looking to heaven, but I need something on earth. <laughs> okay. be a reason. And, and so, you know, that's why I, I wanted to share of my story. Um, and the, the way I, I wrote the book, and I appreciate your, your commentary and, and the flow of the book and the importance of scripture, because my story uh, is the backdrop of the book. This book really is about God, mm-hmm. right? You can forget my story, just remember those scriptures. Yes. Remember what God has done. That's that's why even the book of Acts, why there's this debate, is it the Acts of the Apostle mm-hmm. or is the Acts of the Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. I'm saying it's the Acts of the Holy Spirit. You know, I, I'm not the main character in this story. I'm a supporting actor. All right, all right. Okay, he, he, this story, it is really about God, the hand of God intervening in human affairs. Mm-hmm. And that's what I want people to take away from this book that God is still actively involved in the affairs of man. Mm-hmm. He, he controls the events in world history. He sets up kings and puts oh, down another. Mm-hmm. The Bible says he gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the scholar. <laughs> okay, yes. so he is <laughs> in charge here. And that's yeah. what I wanted to, to leave. So, cause there's a lot of information saying the opposite of it. I want to leave a, a tangible, modern-day mm-hmm. example of how God is still involved in human affairs. It is awesome. And you have truly done that in these pages. Oh, my goodness. I, I, I was so inspired. And uh, I, I tell you, if, I, when, if and when I have some days, I have something I can go read. Because when you read what God did, you know, I know we're covering it, you know, pretty um in an accelerated kind of fashion going through it. But when you read it chapter by chapter, where it is outlined, what you say, what happened, the day and everything, it is just absolutely amazing. And just the fact, like you brought out about your sister being born first, the oldest, and for her to have the Lord speak to her and say, God, to test me. I mean, he just proved it right there that God spoke to her. (laughs) <laughs> and then he, she spoke to your parents and they went and spoke to the doctor the doctors are totally blown away because they can't believe this because like you said it was only twins could have this identical twins could have this and and yet for your sister not twins just older than you to be an exact match mm-hmm. that can't no you can't explain that but god you can't explain that, but God, you know, and it makes you when you the, like the scriptures that you give and looking through the word of God that you have, you know, uh, just put in this intertwined in the whole story. It takes you right to that. 
belief, that faith that you see that it shows you so plainly the hand of God moving all every step of the way. You can just track it and you just shake your head and say, this can't be nothing but God. You can see it. I mean, he just gave us a whole map outlining everything that was done. Just one event after another, you know, and that you know that truly, I tell you, he is, he is omniscient. Oh my goodness. And omnipotent. And I'm not present everything. And to, and it, to think that he allows us to hear his voice. I mean, like little, you say, oh, little old me, he could come to me and, t- and that's what the Holy Spirit will do. He'll speak to us. Yeah. If you will have an ear to hear, he's always speaking. I tell people, it's not the trouble of him speaking, it's the problem of you hearing. <laughs> because he does try to speak to us. He certainly spoke to you, your parents, and putting you in the right place, putting you in the hands of the doctors who would do, would do whatever they could and show them, even to show the community that somebody's eyes, somebody had to see something. Because they, when they start scratching their heads, and then all of a sudden the answer comes up that they know they didn't produce. And if they can't take any credit for it, they have to see God. And God will show himself. And he did it for a reason. You know what I mean? It's, it's amazing that you had to go through all that. But to look at you now, you just say, mm-hmm. I can't, I just can't even fathom it. <laughs> and then, and the fact that you're giving him your voice, that you presented yourself, your body back to him that he can use, you know, in the pastorate to preach, to teach the people. And you have been faithful on the wall all that time, all these years, you know, to just preach the unadulterated word of God and to want to know the word that deeply, you know, that you allow the word to speak and take you where it needs to take you, you know, and, and that's, that's just awesome. It really is. You haven't sold out. You haven't compromised. You know, you've just been true to the word of God. Well, I'll tell you, um, something changes in you when you face death, where death isn't just something that will happen in the future. I mean, to be 13 years old, sitting in a hospital room, have a team of doctors come into the room and you hear them say out of their mouths, there's nothing else we can do. It's probably going to be dead by the end of the week. There, there's stuff in the book that I haven't even, that, there's stuff that happened that I didn't even put in, uh, put in the book because there was so many things, but it was that initial night of me pushing back through the grace of God, the death angel, but along the way, multiple, times, multiple times I kept getting the report. That's it. There's nothing else we can do. And to hear that over and over in your mind at a, a 13 year old mind, my son's age, it, it matures you in a way. So I went into that hospital 13, but I think I came out 31. <laughs> okay. Oh, so I'm, from my perspective yeah. of life, so different. It's very different. Um, it, it was difficult as a child, though, because my friends were 13, but I didn't have a 13-year-old mind mm-hmm. anymore. So there was, uh, I found myself spending time with older folks mm-hmm. because you out there playing games, man, your <laughs> life could be over tomorrow. What you gonna do <laughs> with your life? Right. Isn't that something? Right. And usually the doctors don't let the children hear. They talk to the parents, but you heard everything and you heard their confession that there was nothing else they could do. Mm-hmm. And, and and what they say, man's extremities is God's opportunities. Yeah. And when they confessed there was nothing else they could do, now he said, okay, now you can step aside. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They've changed when, when it was 86 when I was in. Right. 86, they were they was rough. They, yeah. they, they, they weren't trying right to you. preserve your emotions or nothing. They're like, sir. We didn't have HIPAA and all that. We didn't have HIPAA. They, whoever heard it was they heard it. Um and then, you know, sometimes I I don't know if they knew how much I could hear. Mm. Oh. But it, it, as sick as I was, <laughs> these ears. <laughs> <laughs> what what y'all, what y'all saying? They were listening to everything. <laughs> and uh, it was, it's interesting because they used to um, play music for me constantly in my room while I was in the hospital. And you know, for me, th- there were times where 
the only way I knew I was still alive yeah. is if I could hear the music. Mm-hmm. Now that'll preach right there. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, mm-hmm. um, which is why I still have a love for music because music is life for me. I yeah. couldn't move. I had tubes in my mouth. I couldn't speak, but I could hear. Mm-hmm. And the, the music that was being played in my room was a confirmation that God was here. with me, that I'm still here. I'm mm-hmm. still alive. There's still a chance. Mm-hmm. So when, when I talk about the power of music mm-hmm. and that music is a gift that God has given to us to speak directly to the soul of man, mm-hmm. that's why you have to be careful about what type of music that you listen to because it speaks to your soul mm-hmm. and your soul absorbs whatever you, you mm-hmm. take in. Mm-hmm. And and so, you know, it, it's it's the reason why I have continued is because my soul had a conversation mm. <laughs> and when, when, mm. when the other parts of me wants to walk away what, what we used to say my soul cries out anchor <laughs> in the Lord. Mm-hmm. oh my god so i, I folks you got to get it in your soul yeah because you've changed your mind but if it's in your soul your soul will speak to you Mm-hmm. And uh, that, that's part of the reason why I am still here, because I, I wanted to walk away. Mm-hmm. I, I dealt with survivor's guilt. Why did they die and I live? Right. I dealt with other uh, tragic things happening in my life where I've said, God, you should have let me die when I was 13. You spared my life so I can come to this point. I mean, that you should just let me go. So I don't want anybody to think. That, that my fight with the adversary ended when I came One out time. of that hospital right. because there were long-term physical results of what I went through that I still deal with today. My body has changed. I'm still mm-hmm. on medications. I still have a compromised immune system. I'm still struggling. Scars. 34, I still got scars, but I'm still here. That's yes, right. Lord. Mm, 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 mm. Preaching, teaching, and writing. Lord, have mercy. Isn't that something? And I guess, you know, when you when you hear that, when it, it just came into my mind, uh, you having said that, I think about all that the apostles, we don't have lion's dens, we don't have fiery furnace, but these fiery afflictions, these yeah. afflictions, mm-hmm. <laughs> that they said our affliction will but for a moment. <laughs> And, and you was like, well, but that's bad. That wasn't a moment to me. <laughs> that was years. That wasn't a moment. That was years. But they try to say these little these trials that we have, we haven't striven under blood. But I can say, I think you kind of strove under blood. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Yeah. No, and, and the enemy, what the enemy um, might have meant for evil, God turned it around and is using it for good. Because every time you think about it, I think about, you know, like you say, what you think about what the apostle, so often I think about what the apostle Paul faced in that journey, just to preach the word of God. You know, we read over it. Okay, he was stoned. He was shipwrecked. But you got to understand what that meant. You know what I mean? All those things. And he just kept going. The enemy couldn't stop him, you know. And so now today in our times, these are the type of things that he uses to, to silence us. And he only tries to silence those who have something to say who God is truly using and powerful. Do you, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes we think power is uh, being passed over mega church. That's not, that, you can have all that and have no power, you know, but those that are committed, you know, to him and who will preach and teach what he says teach and preach and to be steadfast and unmovable you can look for those things but that's your badge of honor <laughs> yeah and, you know as painful as it is mm-hmm. you know and uh, you know why why the way is suffering i mean i know suffering brings forth a lot of different things and nobody in their right mind has to suffer you know, right. oh Lord, throw it on. I, I guess except Paul. He said, I want to know if he's throw the ship of his supper. Thank you, Paul. But <laughs> I don't know if I'm quite there yet for all of that, you know. But it's just the idea that um, to when you have that kind of relationship, it grows. I'm sure your relationship grew with the Lord even through your suffering, yeah. you know, because you had to cling to him so tightly. 
you know, when you have no one else to rely on but him, it mm -hmm. makes the relationship, you know, so much different. I mean, you know him in a way that maybe we may speak about, but you yeah. actually know him, you know, to have taken you through pain, you know, and, and trials and, and, and all those things of being made at death's door. You know that, yeah. you know? And so that had to change um, things in your life. Yeah, it, it definitely, it changes your perspective. Mm -hmm. It changes your priorities. Um, and I, I look at what Paul said, you know, for I reckon that the suffering in this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. And so we have this current suffering. That's what we see. That's what we face. But the glory shall be revealed. So the glory is hidden. But I have to trust that glory is coming after this. Yes. I have to trust that God doesn't waste anything. Mm -hmm. So if I'm going through something, there's a purpose for it. And I've just got to trust him in that purpose. And I, I'll, I'll tell you, in my own experience, um, I have to be reminded of how far God has brought me yes. from. I have to be reminded when I face today's situation, I have to look at my history with God. And my history with God gives me confidence about my future with him. Mm -hmm. I say all the time that the same God that brought me out before will bring me out now and the next time I get into something he'll bring me out of that too. And I know that because of my history mm -hmm. with God. E even post bone marrow transplant, I still have a new history, new experience being created with God. I say all the time that knowledge is experience. Mm -hmm. The way you know God is through experiencing him. So to say I want to know him in the power of his resurrection, resurrection. through <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> suffering, you're saying I want to experience him <laughs> through resurrection. Uh -oh. Now in order for there to be a resurrection, there I must see. first be a I death. Did. All right. <laughs> Jesus. And you say, I want to experience yes. the fellowship of his suffering. That means I want to get acquainted with his suffering. Mm. I want to spend time in the seat of suffering. Jesus. I want to get to know what mm. suffering is like mm. because that helps me to know him. You can't know his power without his suffering. You experience them together. I mean, power does his best work in the midst of suffering. Who needs power when you don't suffer anything? You don't take power to lay down in the field and drink some lemonade. You don't need power <laughs> for that. Right. Oh, my gosh. And, and, and so um, I just want people to just endure it. It is shaping you. It is making you. Yes. When you come out of it, you will know something about God that nobody can change your mind about. That you don't have to point them to a scripture. You don't have to point them to what Paul said or what anybody else say. When you experience him for yourself, yes, well, come on, your soul testifies mm -hmm. <laughs> to your mind in those days when your mind is weak and weary and ready to give up and walk away. Your soul will testify and speak to your mind and remind you of where you've been and what God has done. And, and so... Uh, again, not to go back to the, the book, and I'm, I'm right. getting the knee to the table, so I might be a little <laughs> wordy here, uh, but uh, I, I wanted to leave the full journey of what I went through mm -hmm. so that people can embrace every part of it. Don't just embrace the victory, but embrace the fear embrace the doubt, embrace the questions, mm -hmm. because all of that is an important part of the story and will give you assurance as you move forward in your own uh, personal journey of faith, healing, and hope. Mm -hmm. that is, I tell you, wow. My goodness, that I tell you, this is, as, as I said, this is, this is more than just a testimony. It's a journey walking with you through 
your life, actually walking us through it and seeing it and feeling it. You do, you get that feeling, you know, it's not something you just read and you go from one page to another. You're feeling this journey, you know, uh, with you, uh, the way that you have actually laid it out and it has, you know, been written here. And, uh, you know, you, I read on page 40 <laughs> where it says, um, I will fear no evil for you are with me. We're quoting the 23rd Psalm, the fourth verse. And you said it took on a new meaning. Mm -hmm. That I was close enough to death that I was standing in its shadow. Mm -hmm. And I had to be reminded that God is with me. So there is no need to fear. Mm -hmm. and, and you can't understand that or know what that's like until you have actually been there. You know, yeah. and that's what I said. You having been there, oh my goodness, mm -hmm. that is that is right there. I mean, you you want to read if you want to know how to go through something, look at somebody who's been through something. Mm -hmm. You know, and and I think that's so often what the Lord does is that He gives us examples, you know, mm -hmm. to look at, and, and He can take you right at death's door and bring you back and say, "See, I have the power of life of death. It's in me. I, it's yeah. me." You know. I can do this or I can do that, you know, and um, we never know what God will do. We know what he's able to do, mm -hmm. you know, Lord. but what happens when it doesn't turn out to be like, you know, he's able to do, but he doesn't do what he's able to do. Right. right. Yeah. Cause I know he's able. Right. Yeah. We know that. Yeah. He's a question. You know, he's able, Right. you know, right. But so, if he don't, <laughs> that's the thing that we wrestle with. But if he doesn't, you know, and uh, you were 13 years old. And even for you to to have some faith as a young boy, but even to be able to embrace your parents' faith, that in your mind, you knew they were praying for you to be able to lay hold on that prayer that the Lord could heal prayer. You know what I mean? Because a lot of times people are not exposed to that spiritual aspect and don't have anything but the human part yeah. to lean on. But that having that spiritual part, that's an aid in your body right there in itself as well, you know? So I tell you. And I didn't know um, what God was preparing me for. Right. Right. And so there were things that happened in my life leading up to this moment that God prepared me for this moment because this is not this wasn't the first time that i had come close mm -hmm. to death all right uh when my mother was three months i think your your screen froze up a little bit yeah there we go uh -huh. okay, here we go mm -hmm. and so i won't go um too much into it because we're probably getting close to our time but this no, no, first... you got a little time okay yeah. good so this wasn't the first time that i had come close to death um, I was on the operating table, room table at three years old because I felt, now the story is I fell down the steps. The reality is my older sister pushed me down the steps. <laughs> just, just for the record. So, for the record. She, <laughs> thankfully, she had that bone marrow because you almost <laughs> took me out. <laughs> so you yelled me. Uh -uh. This. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, um, she claiming that today or no? <laughs> she disputing that. <laughs> this interview is going to remind her of a conversation that is about 40 years old <laughs> that we need to have. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I fell and I just scarred my side of my face. Um, I split my face open, had to have surgery, had an allergic reaction to the anesthesia, and I stopped breathing on the operating table and it got so close to me losing my life then um and so then my, my mother was three months pregnant they couldn't find the heartbeat and they thought she had the miscarriage so the the adversary is trying to get me before i got here once i got here and he still and he was still even trying to get both of us he's always been after us so so many stories even after all of this i mean both of us went to Xavier um, University in Louisiana and we, you know, barely missed Hurricane Katrina. Then we lived in New York, as you all know, um, Pastor Allen, New Jersey. I went to 
school there and we were there for 9-11. I was actually in the tunnel on 9-11. And usually I would take a train to World Trade Center, but we bought a car on September the 10th. So I drove to work that day. And the enemy still wasn't done then. A month before we moved to Minnesota, the 35W bridge, which is a big bridge here in Minnesota, collapsed. And so just every single time, the devil has just been still on the attack, but God is still. Faithful. And the Lord has been there too. <laughs> That's amazing. Yes. Mm -hmm. You would think he would be tired and give up. <laughs> right. You would think so. And right? all that's going on in Minneapolis now, you know, so. Yeah. But I tell you, but God, but you know what? You have the blessed assurance. Yes. Mm -hmm. That you can actually say and have the resume of, of proof mm -hmm. that at every turn he's been there. You know, I mean, when you can look back and count back and say, well, he did this, he did that, mm -hmm. he did this. And he did that so then he can do this too, you know, right. Right. and and that's with it. That's how we, I guess, go from faith to faith <laughs> because your faith just starts to mount up because of your experience. And, and even in all of those things, there were some things that we asked God for and he did not do. So in those situations, faith comes in and says, I trust your judgment. So if you don't do what I am asking you to do, I have enough faith, confidence that you always do what is good for me. Because I, I don't want people to, to leave this conversation thinking that faith means you always get what you ask for. No, faith means you have confidence in his ability and in his will. Yes. I have confidence in his personhood, mm -hmm. in his character, mm -hmm. in who he is. I have confidence in his love. He is my hope. He is my expectation. I have confidence. History tells me that he always does what is good mm -hmm. for me. Even when I don't understand it, even mm -hmm. when I don't like it, I have to stop and say, okay, you have to have a good reason why you let that loved one die. Mm -hmm. There's got to be a good reason why mm -hmm. you lost that baby. Mm -hmm. There has to be a good reason why that ministry didn't work out. There must be a reason why I got laid off of this job. Mm -hmm. I trust your judgment. Oh, God. Come on, somebody. Now, that's mm -hmm. mature faith there. That ain't oh, for yeah. the baby sakes. Right. <laughs> that's right. for the grown folks that have been through something. Come on, somebody. Isn't right? this and and to get you, you know, how many doors had to be opened and closed and opened and closed and opened and closed and opened to get you? <laughs> I've learned that closed doors are direction too. Right. <laughs> yes. yes. They really are. You know, you'd be like, oh, darn it. Why didn't this happen? Why? And then later on, and like they say, 2020 is in hindsight. Then you get pissed. Like, oh, my goodness. Thank God. you. If that had a hat, if I'd have got my way, Lord have mercy. Come on. Right? Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> we, we know not what to pray for right. as we are. That's so it. the Spirit himself makes intercession, intercession. for us. So mm. uh, I, I envision that while I'm praying, the Spirit grabs what I say and says, no, nah, he didn't mean that. Let me, <laughs> let me turn let me it, it up. Let me all right here. That, that's what he meant. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. I'm telling you, the Lord is just so awesome. He is. he is so awesome and this is just such an awesome uh journey mm -hmm. and witness for the lord and um what he's continuing to do in your life and i thank god for you all taking the time to be with us on the well today to share this journey and i'm going to put up all of the information for um our viewers so that you can purchase this book Please get this book because if you want a faith builder, the word of God I know is number one, but God will give witness and written testimony about what he's doing right now, what he's doing today that you can say, you know, you read and you say, well, this is somebody 
that I know, you know, that is right here, right now. And this, and if you're, you're not a respecter of persons, I'm not saying that you always do the same thing for somebody else, but I know you have the ability to do it, which gives me the faith to hope all things and believe all things and trust him, you know, even though I don't trace him to know that he's working something far greater, you know. So um, I really thank the Lord uh, for you putting that testimony, that journey on record. Have it for the record. Just remember, you want, the book is for the record. <laughs> you, and this is for the record. This is such a great title, for the record. I'm telling you, let the record show. And this is certainly showing that. <laughs> so I just thank you all. But you, 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 I'm going to give you some, the last closing remarks. And, I'm, and then I'm going to ask you, if you would, Pastor, if you would pray for the viewers, someone who's watching who may be going through something, you know, that uh, certainly someone who has been through can pray, you know, for uh, all of us. Because there's so many people going through so much during this time, you know, and with so many change changes coming up, we don't know what's going to happen, what's going to happen after November 3rd. But, you know, we're going to trust in the Lord regardless of what, because we have to. Because, you know, God is the only God. He is God. And the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ is the only one that we can put our complete confidence and faith and trust in. So Amen. let me let you and Lady Dana have uh, some closing remarks and then ask you to pray. Um, just thank you again for allowing us to be on the well. We thank you so much just seeing you, speaking with you. I may not speak to you all the time, but just the love and just the friendship and the connection is still there. And still there. <laughs> so grateful, so grateful, so grateful. And we have enjoyed this time. Thank you for allowing the interview to be for the record. And as I said, um, maybe in the future, but Pastor Tim should have been a lawyer because that's the first image that comes to my mind when I read the words for the record. <laughs> document is legal it's official and so um that's certainly what we want to leave as a legacy here that god does care about you mm -hmm. and pastor's gonna pray but there's someone who may feel like well that was good for him but is he gonna do it for me i, I wasn't a church kid i wasn't one who did everything right but i'm here to let you know that god cares even about you mm -hmm. so we're just here to share hope and to love and to put a face on the words of the Bible, a face on faith, and to let you know that you can make it and never to give up. God is concerned about you and what you're going through. Amen. Again, and don't and, and and Lady Dana, don't you also yes. have a Bible class for women, especially that you do? I do. I do. So that is on Monday nights at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, it is on Go to Meeting. So you can call in on a conference call or um, you can be live like this. So we can okay. also give you that information as well. And I'm gonna put that, if you, the viewers will have it. I'll make sure I edit that into that. And thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Well, this may be the first time, but not the last time, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's Amen. Pray. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy and your kindness to us. We thank you for allowing us to have this time together and to celebrate your work, your involvement in human affairs. God, I pray today for that listener or watcher who is struggling in their faith today, yes. trying to find their, their way, more questions than answers, and they're, they're looking for a reason to hold on. Okay. God, I pray that they have heard something yes, in this Jesus. conversation you, that will give them that one thing they need yes, to hold on and not let go. Thank you, Jesus. Build their confidence in you. Yes, Help them to look to you who uh, does all things well. And there's nothing too hard for you. I pray that your healing Yes. will be released, that as individuals watch this video, that bodies will be healed, that spirits will be calmed, and yes. the troubled mind will find peace. 
God, I pray today a special blessing over our sister evangelist, Allen, yes, and the work of her hands and all that you are, are doing in her life. Thank you for the privilege of knowing her. Yes. Expand her borders, enlarge her territory yes, for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Also, I, I, I don't want to forget, Pastor Brewington, you do something uh, on Monday nights, don't you? Uh, also, uh, Sunday nights as well. You do something on Sunday night, but then in Monday morning or, or Monday uh, night? Yeah, I do something called Your Daily Bread yes. every morning at 8 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time on Facebook page at the Fellowship Church. And also our Sunday night Bible study is at 6 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time, also on uh, Facebook uh, Live at Fellowship Church Facebook page. And so That is so awesome. And he is such a fantastic teacher and preacher. And you, if anybody, and I love apologetics, he is an apologist. So you will really appreciate what he has to say uh, and incorporating it throughout the word of God. So please, I'm going to give you all that information to the viewers so that you can, you know, join in. You can go in now. You can just, you know, go in and out, church. You have to open the door. All you have to do is hit a button, you know, hit a key. You're right in the service. And so that's a blessing. And again, I want to thank you all for coming. I want to thank the viewers uh, for being with us again. And I want to invite you again every Thursday, 7.30 p.m. on Facebook, Beverly D. Allen, and also on YouTube channel, Beverly D. Allen, to be at the Well After Hours. God bless you. And we look forward to seeing you next Thursday. is mine oh, what a foretaste of glory divine the year of salvation purchased by God born of his spirit washed in his blood this is my story this is my song Stop!